I'm here today to talk to you about a, a new open source project that we've been working on here at Oracle for several years now. It's actually a breakthrough in virtualization. We're taking virtualization to the next level with a, pro a project called Growl VM. So, you know, we're living in an agile world today where the pace of everything is moving faster and faster in our lives and especially in our data centers. You know, uh, you, you produce code, you produce uh, new releases multiple times a day now rather than multiple once every multiple years. And you got to be able to keep up with it. And um, over the course of it, you know, we've been moving from these big private data centers and big web servers to in environments where everything's IoT, machine learning and AI and, and cloud-based. And um, we're going from a capital expense to a subscription model. And um, along the way, there've been lots of languages that have come up to be able to solve particular problems. For example, R and Scala, uh, you know, allow you to do uh, data, uh, data mining, data analytics you know, Node for uh, scripting, Node.js for scripting, Go, Java, and the list goes on and on and on. And there's really a plethora of languages to choose from. You know, we've been, uh, we've been moving um, cloud software, we've been moving from big iron into uh, virtual machines. And, you know, inside of virtual machines, you have the guest OS, then you have your libraries and your binaries, and then you have your application sitting on top of it. Stack's actually really quite tall. It does give you, you know, a level of abstraction, a, a level of flexibility, because you can move between physical machines. Um, containers, we're supposed to, and they really do make things more efficient, right? Containers are isolated, but they're shared OS, virtualize the OS. You know, with virtual machines, we virtualize the hardware. And with containers, we've now virtualized the operating system. And we want to go uh, take this to the next level, though, because if you look at, if you look at, like, what a container actually looks like um, and what the container stack actually looks like, even the it looks like this. So you have an, you have your host operating system in your container virtualization at the bottom. Then you have an entire stack on top of that, just so you can run your app. And if you're running a small JavaScript app, for example, a small servlet or something, um, there's an awful lot of memory and disk and everything else that's used just to run that little application. You know, just to write a simple hello world in Java it takes 24 megabytes. You know, JavaScript's at 18 megabytes, and in Ruby it's eight megabytes. That's a lot of that's a lot just to be able to print literally print hello world. So, what if we could share these resources? What if we could take these things and these in these uh, stacks and share the common the commonality, the things that are common between them? We give them the same service, like the interpreter, the JIT and compiler, the garbage collector, memory manager, the code cache thread scheduler, network access, and the file system access. What if we could share all of that? Because those are all common, whether you're talking about Ruby or you're talking about Java, you're talking about even C or C++ or any LLVM language. Um, you know, when you look at these vertical stacks, you have all of those things happening in every single one of them. But we could, what if we could share them? Well, there's been some problems. One is garbage collection coupling. And then the other one is... Um, well, other languages just don't run in the JVM very well, for example. Uh, and you try to do it with any other language model, and it doesn't really work either, whether it be .NET or something else. It just There's problems with the, the language object models being able to interact between each other. Well, we've actually solved that, and how we've solved that is with a, with a project that we've been working on called Graal VM. So... Let's talk a little bit about Grawl. So Grawl is polyglot, that is multi-language virtualization. And we start with the Java runtime as a foundation that gives us the virtual machine to do the virtualization on top of. And then what we do is we build up an API that we call Truffle. Now Truffle is a multi-language API that allows us to create objects and structures inside of the Java VM. Then we take the, the language interpreters, like the Ruby language interpreter, the R language interpreter, and we have it interact with Truffle. By doing that, <clears throat> we're now able to create objects within the JVM, like the job, JavaScript or Ruby objects inside of the JVM. This allows us the opportunity to um, 
to ha share the objects, we're, as you'll see, we're going to be able to share the objects inside the JVM between the environments. So this really gives us an opportunity to eliminate all of the code that you've had to write and debug to move data between these language environments. So when you have a multi-language application, uh, you've had to build out these environment. The, you've had to build out ways to connect these environments, whether it be a pipe of some kind, or you know you write a JSON file, or you write a JSON file to a pipe uh, that then gets read in, it gets broken up, reinterpreted, create a new object, act on it, and ship the data back. But we're actually going to be able to pass data back and forth between these without having to do that. That's really pretty cool. The next piece of it is the Graal VM compiler. Now this is this is cool because the Graal VM compiler mon monitors tr the Truffle API and um, learns about the language through the Truffle API and then pre-compiles the code into code snippets. <clears throat> and uh, something really cool that Graal VM does, the compiler does, is It'll even notice that if it um, optimized, pre-optimized incorrectly, and will pull the optimization tree apart and rebuild it properly so that you can be sure that the code that's been compiled is actually the fastest code uh, for your application. Then we, on top of the interpreters, we build the libraries and the, you know, like Node.js and Rails and your applications on top of that. So now we've, we have this shared common infrastructure and a much smaller stack to operate with. But we take it a step further. I mean, this sounds easy, but there are some complications. Um, you know, like, well, doesn't this break security? Well, we've handled that by being able to isolate the memory in, uh, for each of the stacks and for each of the applications through um, a thing called an isolate. And this actually works really well for not allowing anything in that space to access anything outside of that space unless it's explicitly requested. And then how about native code? That's another problem, right? A lot of the Ruby and a lot of the JavaScript stack is actually native code. But what we did is we plugged in the LLVM uh, bit code interpreter. So we now have LLVM and all the capabilities of LLVM inside of GraalVM also. That means that Things like the R native libraries, the JavaScript native libraries, Ruby and Rail na native libraries, and eventually even C and C++ will be able to be run through LLVM inside of the Truffle and Java runtime. So really, any application can be run inside this environment. So here's a little bit more of a thorough picture of what it looks like. So you know, you go to run an application in, say, JavaScript, and how you do it is you type it, you, you give an eval statement, and you say you're going to run it in Ruby, and you give the, the, the line or the series of lines that you want to execute. And that gets passed over to the Ruby interpreter. It gets handled by the Ruby interpreter, and then that object gets passed back. In the meantime, the Graal compiler is interacting with the Truffle API and the Java runtime via the Truffle CI and JVM CI interfaces to be able to compile the code so that the next time you try to run it, it'll be even faster. And you'll notice also that you can run a native application, a native Java application on top of that same JVM. And now you don't have the um, all of the capabilities that you do with Truffle, but it does mean that you have Java being able to run there too. You can also run Java in a Java interpreter on top of Truffle and then get the same kind of interactivity. And I'm going to show you how that looks in just a minute. So the Truffle Polyglot API is what allows us to do this interconnect between these language environments and actually be able to pass objects back and forth between these language environments. In fact, it's the exact same object in memory that gets passed back around between the object environments. The other thing that uh, Graal allows us to do, it actually allows us to, the Truffle API in particular, a lot and the uh, runtime, allow us to embed in the Oracle database and eventually in other databases also and other data, data engines. So uh, this allows us to use Ruby or JavaScript or R inside the database, significantly imp improving the speed because one of the big problems with like writing an R application uh, to interact with a database is you either have to pull a bunch of data over so that you don't make a bunch of round trips back and forth, or you make a whole bunch of round trips back and forth. If you're pulling data over, you're, you're spending time pulling data, most of which you probably won't need. 
um, it, which exposes your application to the possibility of exposing that data when it shouldn't. Um, and if you make the round trips to only get the data you need right now, you're slowed down by all of the round trips, all, all the queries and everything else. But by being able to put gr the Graal VM inside the database and run your application or your, your analysis inside the database, you actually can uh, significantly speed up, uh, multiple X speed up uh, your application. And again, the Truffle API follows there. So rem going back and looking at this, right, we talked about these large stacks that were really big. What does it look like? What would this stack look like using um, Graal VM? What would look like this? So you have a couple of Java, you know, a few Java apps that are native that are running right on top of the runtime. And then you have some Ruby apps that are running in a single Ruby stack, Python apps, apps that are running in a single Python stack, and some Java app, J Node apps running in a J uh, Node stack. So you see, you can see you save a lot of CPU time, you save uh, scheduling time, you save code, you can reuse code, memory management gets simpler, you get higher performance, and you even get you can even get more containers at, um, and get higher server density. Now, this is another thing is you look at this serverless environments that we're building today, and you know, the idea is that you should be able to just throw some code at a, at a server at an environment and have it run and execute and come back with the answer and go away. What that means is you have to have a some kind of container or virtual machine or some environment running waiting to take the code. But if you're going to build out a serverless environment, you're either going to target particular containers or particular VMs for particular languages, or you have to run all of those, going back to this one, you have to run all of those environments all inside that serverless environment, inside of that VM, to uh, so that it can be ready for anything that's thrown at it. But with Grawl, you know, it, you literally just throw the code at it and it'll handle it. Uh, you know, I told you uh, things, it goes faster. So let me just give you some numbers. So, you know, this is an open source project and we've been working on it for a while. Um, so, you know, I'm going to give you the real numbers. You know, Java, Scala, they're about anywhere from 0.8x of the natives per, in performance to 2x faster. JavaScript is about, you know, 50% slower to 150%, you know, 1.5x faster. Um, and it seems to be right around, a, you know, right on par for JavaScript. Ruby and R can get significantly faster. Somewhere around 5x is what we've seen. Um, and then C and C++ it can be pretty slow, but we're working on that. And actually, we're, you know, the whole point of um, talking to you about this project is we're looking for people to get involved, to add your favorite language to it. It help us make this faster. We want to, you know, we're going to give this away. We're putting it out there. It's out on Git. It's available today and has been for quite some time. We're looking to get people involved so that we can make this faster and spread this around the world so that people can use it and benefit from it. Um, you know, application level performance, it's not just about benchmarks. So let's look at a real application. Twitter actually has published this. They did a, a talk about this. With Grawl, Twitter runs 25% faster. So they put out 25% more tweets per second with use, by using Grawl. And the WebLogic server, we did some tests there, and we get about 10% faster performance. So real-world performance, you can get real-world performance, uh, real-world applications, you get real-world performance benefits. So we're pretty excited about that, and we've been working with Twitter, and we're you know, looking for other companies to pick this up and use it in their infrastructure too. So let me give you a demo. I've got a, I've got a couple of little demos of how this all works. And I'm going to walk through the code for the polyglot demo first, and then I'll show you. So we have a, a Java class called test, and it prints a hello world, an HTML hello world. <clears throat> so you'll see this is a Java, this is a Java class here. Okay. Now, this is what the server, this the JavaScript looks like. I'm going to dig into this a little bit. Let's break it down a little bit, make it a little easier. So we create a, a Java type, a big integer, right? Um, and first thing we're going to then do is start out the text with hello world from Grawl.js. So that's going to print. Now we're going to add to that big integer. We're actually going to make it two, or um, yeah, two to the hundred. 
and we're going to print that out and add that to that text. So now we've taken this Java integer and we've printed it into the JavaScript text. Then we're going to call that test class, which printed out that hello world. Now we're going to, now it gets interesting. Now we're getting out of the world of Java and into the R. And we're actually going to run a query. Oops. We're going to run a query that gives us um, an, a value, a random value actually, into a, an array. And we're going to add that. Then we're going to build out an entire SVG object. So we're going to actually build a little cloud graph and plot it. And we're going to be, take that and we're going to return that into that text object also. And then finally, we're going to set up and we're going to listen on port 3000 to actually execute this. So this is what this uh, looks like here. So it's actually starting up now. We can flip back here and you can see it's, uh, it's loaded the required lattice package from R. And here you go. So you can see here the hello world from Goral.js. That's the JavaScript print. Then we have the, uh, the big number. Then we have hello from Java. We have the random number in the, that was in that array element zero. And we have a cloud plot here. And we can even refresh this. You can see the numbers change and the cloud plot changes. Refresh again. And every time we're calling into R and redoing this entire thing. So the key here is, is in other, you know, in other environments, you would have, you couldn't have done this. You would have had to pass this data back and forth. This cloud plot would have had to been generated, maybe written to a file or piped across a, you know, a pipe uh, to get the job done. And here we just passed it back as an object. So that was the first thing. So that's, that's kind of cool. I'm really, uh, really excited about what's possible here for engineers. So let's talk about the other one, which is Java streams. And uh, here, there's not really anything in the slide deck, so. Okay, so I actually have a little script here I'm gonna run that's gonna print out what it's doing while it's doing. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna compare compilation and run of native JDK against uh, running Graal. So um, I'll just, uh, as it, I'll just, uh, da, 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 there we go. As it runs, so here we did a compilation of teststream.java, and it's running, and you can see here 20 passes. It took uh, 4.8 seconds. Now we're going to build an image, which is a, spe a specific compilation. So Graal has the ability to create a, compile, a compiler just for the platform you're on and just for the application you're going to run. It, uh, it takes here a couple of seconds, a couple of uh, 20 or 30 seconds to create that compiler. And then we're going to do we're going to uh, do another compile of that exact same code, and then run it using Graal. It's just about done here, actually. Yeah. A couple more lines. So you can see here it's actually going through the entire Java environment and looking at the features and the objects and the type flow and everything else, and uh, putting it all together to build this specialized compiler. Uh, very good. So we're down to debug info. So we're just about done here, and then. There you go. So now we've compiled, and you can see it took almost no time to compile the thing. Um, just a little app to show you uh, what it can do. That was that. And then we have, a, we have a couple of sites that you can go to to get more information. Uh, the, we have a Graal VM OTN page, which is where you can download the binaries as they currently stand, and they're updated on a regular basis, uh, almost a weekly basis. And then we have, um, and that QR link on the left hand side will get you that. And then we have all of the source code is available on Git. Like I said, this is an open source project. And uh, that location is uh, available in the QR code in the, on the right hand side. So I look forward to, uh, I hope to see you around. I hope to be interacting with you as we work on making Graal a worldwide uh, sensation. Thank you very much for your time today.